Uh, so those of you who were at DREAM last year will have heard a little bit of this, but hopefully you'll be excited by uh, the updates. So I don't have to say much about respiratory viruses. We all get two to four of them a year. Maybe those of you with kids in daycare get more than that. Um, but what's most interesting is that uh, they're the number one cause of physician visits in the US, so they're a large bur burden on the healthcare system. So there are viruses floating around all the time. Um, why aren't we constantly sick? Well, there are a number of uh, you know, innate characteristics as well as just uh, random stochastic characteristics. Uh, in this challenge, we focus on uh, transcriptomic uh, reasons uh, that confer either resistance or susceptibility to viruses. Previous work uh, prior to this challenge showed that uh, signatures in transcriptomic data that well differentiate those who become sick following uh, exposure to virus uh, usually become apparent about 40 hours post-exposure. Uh, but we wondered, can we identify early stages of, uh, early stage predictors of viral infection that is, uh, you know, people who are going to get sick when you expose them to a virus, or people who are getting sick but are not yet symptomatic. To do this, uh, we used a viral, uh, human viral challenge model. Uh, this is a study, an experiment where healthy subjects, uh, probably grad students, are uh, put in a hotel room and exposed to virus. Uh, they're then monitored for several uh, days to weeks following exposure. Um, they're assayed for uh, endpoints such as viral shedding and symptoms. Um, you can see here in this figure, this guy stays happy. This is a resilient guy. Uh, this guy gets pretty sick. He's pretty unhappy. Um, during the course of this study, there are frequent blood draws, um, and that blood is then profiled on an AFI chip. Uh, what else do I want to say about this? Um, yeah. So the training data came from seven studies uh, studying four different respiratory viruses. Uh, the numbers here indicate the sample num numbers at each time point. So you can see that uh, while by and large these studies aligned in terms of their sampling rate, uh, there are some outliers. Um, and from these data, we select it, we uh, split them into training and test data. Uh, the test data later became leaderboard data, um, and I'll explain that in a moment. Uh, we developed three sub-challenges based on uh, two different outcomes. Uh, the first is viral exposure. Uh, viral exposure was assayed via nasal lavage, uh, so they could uh, you know, see who was actually shedding virus um, following exposure. Uh, so the first sub-challenge was to predict uh, who eventually shows um, viral shedding uh, following exposure. Uh, this is a binary outcome. The second sub-challenge focused on symptoms as a binary outcome, who becomes uh, symptomatic following exposure. And the third one uh, is also around symptoms, but on symptoms, uh, more uh, could we predict symptom severity. So uh, we used the maximum log symptom score over the course of the study, uh, which again is a continuous outcome. Uh, there were very few uh, clinical and uh, demographic information, uh, but we had age and gender. Uh, like I said, we split the training into, uh, sorry, we split the data into a training and test uh, set. We had envisioned a beautiful challenge uh, in multiple phases, uh, where each phase uh, corresponded to increasing proportions of that time series gene expression data. So the first phase was going to be up to, challenge, uh, to viral exposure, so up to time zero. Um, phase two was up to time, 20, uh, time 12, uh, time 24, and time 36. However, this challenge experienced an uh-oh. Uh, there was an inadvertent release of the test data uh, by someone not involved in the challenge, uh, but it, it compromised our ability to use those data as uh, independent test data. 
So after we picked ourselves up and dusted ourselves off, uh, we re-envisioned the challenge in a way that I think uh, made the challenge better. Um, and hopefully you'll agree with me about that at the end of the talk. Um, first of all, we made the what would have been the test data into a leaderboard set uh, and decided to make this a community, in, uh, community phase analysis um, with multiple, uh, uh, multiple different analyses uh, using those leaderboard data. So uh, we opened up the data as a leaderboard set. Um, we decided to restrict ourselves to two time points instead of the four. Uh, so using data up to hour zero and hour, up to hour 24. And then we asked for some um, supplementary information uh, from each of the participants. Uh, predictor lists, we were interested in what predictors they were using um, in their models. Uh, we asked for leave one out cross validations for the purpose of ensemble uh, model building. Uh, I'm not gonna get into that today, but uh, Honest and SQ has a uh, poster today, uh, this afternoon on that subject, so I encourage you to go, excuse me, to go talk to her. Um, we asked for uh, code and write-ups, similar to uh, what we do in most, most dream challenges. Uh, we also asked for permutations, where here uh, we asked the participants to fit models on permuted data and predict in the real data to get a handle on uh, how much overfitting is going on. Um, and eventually we, uh, we did get an independent test data set, so that was good. We actually, uh, we got two. One ended up uh, not to be uh, suitable when uh, participants uh, started predicting on it. So uh, I'm only gonna focus on the RSV data today. So these are the results in the independent test data. Uh, here we've taken each model and performed a permutation, uh, computed a permutation p-value. Uh, so each, sorry, is this going up or down? Uh, down, okay. Uh, so each uh, point on this uh, plot represents a model. Uh, this is here the uh, unity line, the, um, uh, diagonal line corresponds to what you would, ex would expect at random. Um, departures above that show enrichment. And we can see even at hour zero, we can uh, predict who becomes symptomatic uh, when following exposure. Similarly, for sub-challenge three, which is uh, the log symptom score, we see enrichment even at hour zero. So even prior to exposure, participants were able to predict in these data. Um, unfortunately, in sub-challenge one, which was viral shedding, we actually saw a lack of enrichment, um, a depletion of signal, um, indicating likely that there was overfitting in this particular sub-challenge. And in fact, when we look at the correlations between the leaderboard and independent test submissions, we see a negative correlation. We had a very active community phase based on the uh, uh, submission requirements in the leaderboard round. Uh, the first uh, question was focused around, you know, what can we learn about biology from those predictors? Uh, the second was, were some of the uh, uh, subjects harder to predict um, than others? Uh, the third was around using those permutations to see if that is a better uh, surrogate for, uh, to account for overfitting, um, and I'm not gonna talk about that at all today, uh, so I apologize. Um, and the fourth uh, was surrounding whether or not there were any uh, processing or modeling approaches that were associated with better performance. So project one uh, focused again on the uh, biological interpretation of these models. Uh, when a pathway analysis was done on each set individually, uh, there was no enrichment, with the exception of one team that actually used pathway information in their uh, model selection procedure. And in fact, there was very little overlap between, uh, between predictor lists uh, for any two models. Uh, however, when we take the, the union of all predictors, we start to see really interesting biology pop up. Um, for example, at time zero, which is prior to exposure, we can see that um, innate immune uh, 
related pathways like heme metabolism as well as inflammatory response are associated with uh, those who uh, go on to become symptomatic. Whereas uh, more homeostatic uh, functions like uh, uh, mixing, mix signaling and uh, oxidative phosphorylation are associated with uh, going on to uh, be resistant. Uh, and Arthi Tala, who led this, uh, this work, has a poster today, so I hope you go talk to her. Um, we also looked at the, uh, the subjects and found that, uh, indeed, there were some subjects that were really well predicted by, some, uh, by most of the teams as well as about 25% of the, the subjects that were uh, misclassified by most. Uh, and then there were some, some uh, subjects in between that uh, showed heterogeneity. But there was a high degree of correlation between uh, time zero and 24. So if you were easy to predict at time zero, you were easy to predict at time 24 and vice versa. Uh, Slim Ferrati is also here today and has a poster, so I encourage you to go um, hear more about these results. I am quickly running out of time and my slides are not advancing. Okay, so uh, project four focused on um, looking at what components of modeling were important in these data. This was a huge effort in which uh, the participants read each of the write-ups and categorized them according to a data dictionary of modeling and uh, processing terms. Uh, what they found uh, in this data set was that um, machine learning uh, method was actually not that important, but that pre-processing of these data were the most, uh, most important factor in terms of model performance. Uh, so in summary, inadvertent data release allowed us to re-envision this dream challenge in a way that I think made it better than it would have otherwise been. Uh, we showed that response to viral exposure can be predicted even prior to exposure. Um, I also want to acknowledge two outstanding teams. We did not uh, call winners in this challenge uh, based uh, on the new um, uh, community paradigm, but we had two teams that performed well in both sub-challenge two and sub-challenge three at both time points. Um, CWRU Patho from um, Case Western Reserve, uh, Slim and Arthi are both here, um, and Schrodinger's cat from uh, University of tu Turku in Finland. Um, yeah, and so I've already gone through all of that. Um, I'd like to uh, acknowledge our organizer, organizing team, particularly from Duke and from Sage, um, all of the community phase participants, um, including the, uh, the group leads highlighted that are bolded here. Um, posters are uh, denoted with stars. Um, and then I'd like to thank our funding, which was through DARPA.